Greetings! And in this tutorial, we will quickly uh, see how we could forecast and balance the equipment usage. Now, uh, the <clears throat> schedule loaded with equipment is often referred to as an equipment loaded schedule, and it is no uh, different than a cost loaded schedule or a human resource loaded schedule. The basic principle that we uh, follow in developing these schedules is the same. And forecasting uh, equipment is similar to forecasting cash. So there is another video talking about forecasting cash, and you can see the great similarity in the methodology which is followed across. So the process which is followed is that you start by doing your critical path analysis. You draw your logic diagram or a precedence diagram. Uh, we do the forward pass to identify the early start and early finish times. Then we do the backward pass to identify late start, late finish timings. We use this knowledge to uh, identify the float for each of those activities. And then we can use this information to plot a bar chart. Uh, clearly indicating the float and once the bar chart has been indicated uh, developed we can load that bar chart with uh, either equipment uh, or uh, we can load it with ca uh, with cost resources so here in this example we will be loading the bar charts with the equipment and then we can examine the loading and adjust the bars within the float so here is an example the uh, precedence diagram is shown over here and using this uh, early start and the uh, uh, timings we have plotted this uh, chart uh, the bar chart and you can see we can we have loaded the resource requirements for each of the, uh, uh, the tasks on it so here you can see the activity w requires two d8 caterpillars which is the equipment we we, we are uh, taking as an example in this case study equipment k requires only one uh, uh, d8 caterpillar machine whereas equipment uh, uh, the activity b would require four throughout so we have uh, loaded the dark line over here indicates the float now there is a bit of a constraint facing this project and it is that only 10 caterpillar machines are available in this project and you can see a clear problem here running through month four to month seven we have got a resource requirement which is much more than uh, what we what is actually available so we need to adjust this uh, additional resources so there are a number of uh, ways of doing it so we cannot do anything with equip uh, activity b because it's a critical activity with uh, no float uh, the other activities which are taking place in this zone which is a resource loaded zone uh, include activity b activity p and activity uh, and F. So here you have seen we have uh, done the calculations and we have decided to postpone the start of activity F. So we have decided, so here is the uh, previous uh, resource loaded graph and you can see we have got a very healthy uh, float in front of activity F. And we have decided to postpone the start of activity F using this float to minimize the resource requirement so we have decided to uh, remove the resources from here and slightly uh, we could not have started here because again that would lead to resource overloading problem and start the activity so we have moved these resources from here to uh, these new locations as you can see here and you can also see from the logic diagram that activity o follows activity f so subsequently we have to move the activity uh, o to follow uh, activity f and now you can see the new resource profile we are nicely managing the resources uh, within our constraint which is 10. now it is also possible to explore further options so for instance, you can still identify the peak requirements, which is starting from uh, month seven, uh, which is eight, eight, nine, nine. And you can still further explore uh, the possibility of uh, using the float time here to further reduce this. So you can possibly take it further and possibly try to deliver this project with a maximum of seven uh, Caterpillar. So again, it's a principle of um, utilizing the available resources uh, in a most efficient manner. So here you can see without compromising our cost, without compromising our quality, without compromising health and safety, we have managed the resources uh, within the available constraints.